What if the latest 2024 presidential election polls were adjusted by the polling error that we have seen in the last two election cycles? I've already done a video adjusting current polls based on the error in the last three presidential elections, which you can check out by clicking the link in the top right hand corner right now. But in today's video, we are going to expand this view out to Senate and governor races as well in both the 2022 and 2020 election cycles. Now, this should be interesting as while the polls did generally underestimate Trump and other Republicans in 2020, they overestimated them in 2022 as Democrats were the ones to exceed expectations in those midterms. Now on your screen right now is a 2024 electoral college map, with all of the states not expected to be competitive already filled in as safe Democrat or safe Republican. Each of these states backed either Joe Biden or Donald Trump by more than 9 percentage points in the 2020 election, and we have no reason to think, based on current polls or trends, that they will be contested by either candidate this November either. That being said, I have purposefully left Virginia and Colorado off the safe list, as we do have polling averages available in both states, and they both show Biden leading Trump by less than 10 points. More on that later. I've also placed the second congressional district in Nebraska down as lean Democrat, as well as the second district in Maine as likely Republican, since we don't have any polling averages available to us in either of these districts just yet. Biden did win Nebraska 02 by 6 points in 2020, and Trump won Maine 02 by 7. But obviously, we can't properly assess how previous polling errors would impact a non existent 2024 average. So that leaves us with 223 electoral votes not yet rated. President Biden holds a preliminary electoral vote advantage with 189 over former President Trump's 126. Now let's go by order of largest to smallest margin in the current 2024 polling averages. So starting in Ohio, formerly known as the bellwether state, now a reliably Republican-leaning state, where the latest decision desk HQ in the Hill average is Trump leading by 10.2%, based on 11 polls, while the 538 average is Trump leading by 9.6%. Now this 538 average is full field, so in other words, it includes Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and other less notable third-party candidates. RFK has claimed ballot access in Ohio. He's actually qualified in exactly half of the 14 states we're examining in this video that we'll get to here in a second. But taking a look over at the latest polling errors in Ohio, they underestimated Trump by 7 points in 2020, and then Governor Mike DeWine by almost 6 points in 2022, yet pretty much nailed the final margin in Ohio's 2022 Senate contest between J.D. Vance and Tim Ryan. The final average here had Vance up 6.2%, and he won by 6.1%. The overall error across these three elections underestimated Republicans by 4.3 points on average. So if we do adjust the combined average from DDHQ and 538, which has Trump up 9.9%, then the adjusted results for our purposes in this video becomes Trump plus 14.2. That is of course a safe Republican margin over on the electoral map. I got that number by simply adding the 4.3 point Democratic bias in favor of Trump's current 9.9 .9 point lead on average between DDHQ and 538, and that's how we got to 14.2 points. Let's move on to Texas now though, the second largest state in the nation with 40 electoral votes at stake, and the latest DDHQ average is Trump up 9.2%, based on 11 polls, 50.2% to 41%, and according to 538 he is up by 11 points, or 11.1% to be exact, with 45.6% to Biden's 34.4%. Those are already both safe Republican margins here, according to my own rating classifications, but they grow even larger when taking a look at the previous polling errors, as Republicans have been consistently underestimated both in the 2020 US Senate and presidential races, as well as the 2022 governor contest between incumbent Greg Abbott and Beto O'Rourke. Across these three elections, we see a pro-D bias of 3.1%, which means that the average of 10.2%, the lead that Trump enjoys across the DDHQ and 538 averages, grows to 13.1%, another safe R rating. The next state on our list is another electoral behemoth, Florida. 30 electoral votes are at stake in the Sunshine State, where the polling average is Trump plus 8.5. 
He did win Florida by 3.4% in 2020, the largest margin for a candidate of either party in Florida since 2004, as it was one of only five states where he did do better than in 2016. Over in the 538 average, we see Trump also leading by 10.9%, with 45.8% to Biden's 34.9%, and then Kennedy at 8.5%. Now, Florida is notoriously difficult to get on the ballot in and consistently ranks among the lowest third-party vote shares in the country. But nevertheless, taking a look at the average error over the last few cycles, it's strong, the strongest bias, actually, overestimating Democrats in any state, 6.9% on average. 538's average in 2020 had Biden up by 2.5 points headed into the election, yet Trump won by 3.4. And then in 2022, Republican incumbents Governor Ron DeSantis and Senator Marco Rubio both won re-election in landslide fashion, at least by Florida standards, 19 and 16 points, respectively, despite having only been favored by 12 and 8 points. So applying this 6.9 point Democratic bias to Trump's average lead of 9.7% lifts Florida all the way up to Trump plus 16.6, the strongest safe Republican rating yet. Shifting gears now, let's head over to Colorado. Biden won Colorado by 13.5 points in 2020. It saw the strongest pro-Democrat shift of any state in the nation between 2016 and 2020. And out of all the states we'll be examining in this video, polling in Colorado has actually underestimated Democratic candidates the most. You'll see that in a second here as we take a look at the DDHQ average here first, showing Biden up 7 points over Trump based on 9 polls in their head-to-head -head average. 538 has not yet generated an average, including RFK, so this 7.1 point lead is the one that we'll be using to adjust based on the prior polling errors, which have overestimated Republican support in three straight contests, most notably in 2022 when polls underestimated Democratic gubernatorial and Senate candidates by 7 and 6 points. The overall average bias is R plus 3.6, which means we add 3.6 points to Biden's 7.1 point lead according to DDHQ. And therefore, we get a Biden plus 10.7 lead, another safe margin, but this time it goes blue. Now shifting back over to North Carolina, Trump leads Biden by 3.9%, according to 36 polls included in the head-to-head -head average. Meanwhile, in the 538 average, including RFK, Trump leads by 6%, having led in every single poll taken so far this cycle. North Carolina has backed Republicans in seven straight contests for president, or Senate, each by less than six points. And in terms of previous polling errors, we have four recent elections to calculate from here. Republicans were underestimated in each of the 2020 races for governor, Senate, and president, yet were overestimated in the 2022 Senate election. In 2020, Biden led in 538's average going into election day, yet lost, as was the case with the Democratic Senate nominee Cal Cunningham though his underperformance was unique in the fact that it was largely due to a late-revealed scandal. Anyways, the average bias across these four races was D plus 3, so let's add those three points to Trump's combined average via DDHQ and 538, which is 4.95%, rounded up to 5%, and thereby get 8%, which places North Carolina down as likely Republican. To the south of North Carolina, let's go to Georgia. Biden became the first Democrat to win the Peach State since Southern Governor Bill Clinton won it in 1996. Biden's 0.2% victory was his narrowest margin in any state in that election, and 2024 polls seem to suggest that the tides are turning back in favor of Republicans as Trump leads Biden by 4.5 points based on 37 polls according to Decision Desk HQ. Now this lead is again even larger according to 538, 5.3%, which has stayed relatively consistent since the beginning of March. Combining these averages, we get Trump plus 4.9, and taking a look at the polling errors here, there's actually only a net D plus 0.3 bias. As while Republicans were underestimated in 2020, Democrats were underestimated in 2022. Though in all four of those elections, the polls were within three points of the final outcome, which does mean that they performed how they were supposed to as the result was within the margin of error. Adjusting Trump's 4.9% lead up 0.3 points based on this error, we get Trump plus 5.2%, a lean Republican margin. 
Now let's go all the way back out west to Nevada, which backed Biden by 2.4 points in 2020, the same margin Hillary Clinton won it with in 2016, which does mean that it actually shifted right relative to the nation, as the national popular votes did shift 2.5 points to the left in favor of Biden. Now the latest average from DDHQ has Trump leading Biden by 3.3% based on 34 polls. RFK has qualified for the ballot here as we take a look over at the 538 full field average. Now this one has Trump's lead at 5.7 points, almost 2 points higher than DDHQ, with Kennedy again around 10 points. Going over to the previous polling error sheet, the average polling error in Nevada is exactly even, having not a having not over or underestimated either party. It's literally 0.0%. Now, the polls did have incumbent Democratic Senator Catherine Cortez Mosto trailing her Republican opponent, Adam Laxalt, in 2022 by 1.4 points, yet she won by 0.9%. Still, that difference was within the margin of error, as were the other errors in the other two contests. And so, now given that there is no bias to adjust the 2024 averages with, we're just going to combine the DDHQ and 538 averages to get Trump plus 4.5, and simply place Nevada also down as lean Republican. Jolting all the way back up and over to the northeast in New Hampshire, a Democrat-leaning state that has consistently been the most purplish in this region. Biden won it by 7 points in 2020 after Clinton came less than half a point from losing it to Trump in 2016. The latest average from Decision Desk HQ based on 10 polls is Biden up 3.7% on average, with 50.6% to Trump's 46.9%. Now this is pretty close to the margin I would currently project Biden to win with in New Hampshire, yet if we look over at the average polling error here as we don't have a 538 average to look at, we see a 2.1 point underestimation of Republicans on average across four races, though this is disproportionately impacted by the 2020 governor race, where Republican incumbent Chris Sununu won by 32 points, and polls had him up by only 20 points. Alas, adjusting for this D plus 2.1 bias, we narrow Biden's polling advantage down to just 1.6%, translating over to a tilt Democrat rating here. Next, we go back to Arizona. The Grand Canyon state was the second closest in 2020 at Biden plus 0.3. It had previously gone Republican in 16 of the last 17 elections, and it does appear to be trending back into the Trump corner here, as according to the latest average by DDHQ, Trump leads by 3.3%, based on 46 polls. And then the 538 average that has him leading by 4.5%, 4.5 points, where we've seen him lead in pretty much every survey taken so far this cycle. As we take a look over at the previous polling errors now, keep in mind that Democrats have won the last five major statewide elections in Arizona for president, senate, and governor, so if Trump does win, it would be countering back against that trend. The overall bias across the last four of these races shows an ever so slight overestimation of Republicans actually, with a bias of R plus 0.2. And as you can see here, in each case, the polls were only off by about 2-3 to three points. They overestimated Democrats in 2020, yet underestimated them in 2022, as perhaps most notably Carrie Lake, the Republican nominee for governor, led Democrat Katie Hobbs headed into election day, yet lost by 0.6%. Now translating this tiny previous bias over to Trump's current lead, which is 3.9% according to an average of our two averages, we then get an adjusted result of R plus 3.7, another lean Republican margin. As we see here, Trump is favored to sweep the key Sunbelt states by similar margins here in Arizona, Nevada, and Georgia. Let's head back to the Midwest in Iowa, where Trump's lead is surprisingly low right now at only 3.1%, based on 10 polls in the DDHQ average. I say surprisingly low because Trump won it by 9 in 2016 and 8 in 2020, and he's pretty much overperforming his previous margins everywhere else. This average is heavily influenced by a Zogby strategy survey from mid-April that had Trump up only 2 points over Biden. This is the only poll added to this average since February, so its relative weight in the average is pretty strong, which drags Trump down. But heading over to the previous polling error here in Iowa, its bias of D plus 4.3 is one of the strongest in the country, as Republicans have consistently been underestimated in each of the last four elections. 
Trump only led by 1.3% in 2020, yet won by 8.2%, similar to how Republican Senate candidate Joni Ernst led her Democratic opponents by 1.4% in 2020, yet won by 6.8%. And then, contrary to almost every other state in 2022, the Republican candidates for Senate and Governor were underestimated by around 2-3 to three points. So taking this 4.3 point number, and then adding it to Trump's current 3.1 point lead, gets him up to 7.4%, which does translate over to a likely Republican margin on the electoral map. Our next state is Pennsylvania, the Keystone State, probably the most important state on the 2024 Electoral College map, as it does hold 19 electoral votes, more than any of the other six key battlegrounds, even if Biden manages to hold on in Wisconsin and Michigan, as well as Nevada and Arizona. Still, all Trump needs to reach 270 electoral votes is a win in Georgia and Pennsylvania. Trump did carry Pennsylvania by 0.7% in 2016, before Biden flipped it back by 1.2% in 2020. The latest average from DDHQ has Trump leading by 1.5 points, based on 52 polls, very much within the margin of error as Trump holds 48.3% over Biden's 46.8%. This is actually the only true battleground state in which Biden has held a lead over Trump at some point this cycle. As you see here, he led in late March and mid-April, before Trump started leading more consistently here over the last few weeks. Now as for the 538 average, it has Trump leading by a very similar margin, 1.8%, with RFK Jr. down at 8.7% here, in a state that he has not yet qualified for the ballot, but where the ballot access requirements are not too stringent, at least as compared to states like Arizona and Georgia. Now as for the previous polling bias here in Pennsylvania, we do see Democrats overperform in 2022. John Fetterman trailed Dr. Oz in the final average entering the Senate race in those midterms, yet won by almost 5 points, while Josh Shapiro won the governor's race in landslide fashion by almost 15 points over Doug Mastriano. Yet back in 2020, the polls overestimated Biden against Trump by 3 points. Overall, the average comes out to underestimating Democrats by 2.1%, or an R plus 2.1 bias. Which does mean that if we apply this adjustment to the DDHQ and 538 average at Trump plus 1.65, the average actually flips in favor of Biden at D plus 0.45, for Biden up about a point and a half, a tilt Democrat margin here on the map. Moving just over to Michigan now, Biden won it by 3 points in 2020, his largest margin out of the 5 key swing states that swung back and forth between Biden and Trump in 2020 and 2016. Michigan is voted to the left of Pennsylvania and Wisconsin in 8 straight cycles, yet in each of those cycles, these 3 states voted for the same candidate and that being Democrat in all but 2016, when Trump swept them in a surprise sweep of the Rust Belt. The current polling average, according to DDHQ, has Trump leading by 1.3% based on 50 polls, 48.5% to 47.2%, as the last four polls added to this average have split two for Biden and two for Trump. As for the 538 full field average, it's even narrower at Trump plus 0.5, with Kennedy at 8.5%, that's significant because Kennedy is officially qualified for the ballot in Michigan, as confirmed by the Secretary of State's office, and averaging out the head-to-head 1.3-point -head lead and the full-field 0.5-point lead, we get Trump plus 0.9. Then taking a look at the previous polling error, there is a slight pro-D bias here, as in 2020, the polls underestimated Republicans by around 4-5 to five points. But in 2022, we saw Gretchen Whitmer, the incumbent Democratic governor, re-elected by 11 points despite only polling ahead by 5 points. Going back over the map, let's add that 1 point to Trump's tally to get Trump plus 1.9, a tilt Republican margin. Down in Virginia now, Biden won it here by 10 points in 2020, as the Commonwealth has fully transitioned from a once reliably Republican state to now strongly Democratic leaning. That being said, the latest average available via DDHQ and The Hill has Biden leading by just a point, based on 16 polls, and we don't have an average from 538 just yet. So taking a look over at the previous polling error, we're going to end up with an adjusted result favoring Trump, as the polls here in Virginia have underestimated Republicans by 2.7% on average, between the 2020 presidential and Senate contests. Adjusting Biden's 1-point lead by 2.7 points in favor of the GOP, 
we get Trump plus 1.7, a tilt R margin. Pretty crazy considering that Pennsylvania is tilting Democrat on the same map. Now all we're left with is Wisconsin and Minnesota, the two closest margins right now in terms of polling. In Minnesota, we see Biden leading by 0.6%. Like in Virginia, this is much closer than I would expect it to be, considering that Biden won it by 7% in 2020. And Minnesota has gone blue in 12 straight elections, actually the longest Democratic streak in the country. With that said, taking a look over at the 538 average, Biden's lead is a bit more comfortable, at 2.4% with RFK included. The average between these two polls is Biden plus 1.5, which is the exact margin that Hillary Clinton narrowly carried Minnesota with in 2016. That being said, the average polling error here has underestimated the Republican Party by 2.2% on average across the 2020 Senate and presidential races, as well as the 2022 governor race. All three misses, I guess, were within or around the margin of error. But regardless, if we shift the current Biden lead of 1.5% by 2.2 points in favor of Republicans, we get a Trump plus 0.7 margin here in Minnesota. So it tilts Republican. Finally, let's go to Wisconsin, the narrowest polling average in any states right now, according to DDHQ, which has Trump up by only 0.1% based on 35 polls, Trump 47.5% and Biden 47.4%. Four out of the last five polls added here to this average have shown Biden in front or tied with Trump. However, expanding out to the full field average via 538, we see Trump's lead grow all the way up to 1.2%. And if we average out these averages, we get a Trump plus 0.65 margin, or 0.7%, very similar to his 2016 margin. Now keep in mind that Wisconsin has been decided by less than a point in four out of the last six presidential cycles, including the last two when Trump won by 0.8% in 2016 and in 2020 when Biden won by 0.6%. Now taking a final look over at past polling errors, if you've seen the last video on polling errors in the last two presidential races, you may remember that Wisconsin has underestimated Trump by more than any other state. But now, with 2022 included, we see a combined bias of only D plus 0.7. As while Trump was underestimated by nearly 8 points in 2020, Democrats overperformed in the midterms by 3.8% and 2.3% in the governor and senate races, respectively. So now again, shifting the Trump plus 0.7 polling margin, 0.7% in his favor, we get approximately Trump plus 1.4, another tilt R margin here, completing our 2024 presidential election map, in which we have adjusted the latest polling averages by the average error in the major statewide elections of the last two election cycles. And here we see Donald Trump would win the 2024 presidential election in this scenario with 316 electoral votes to Joe Biden's 222. Now, of course, we're still a long way out from November 5th, and these averages are certain to shift in all kinds of different ways before then. But this is yet another data point suggesting that the Biden re-elect is in a very vulnerable position right now. Shout out to my channel members on screen here, thank you so much for your support. If you would like to become a member, go ahead and click the join button below this video to receive exclusive perks. Make sure to subscribe to my channel down below and please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Check out my forecasting website at electionpredictionsofficial.com. You can also check out more content for my channel here. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. EP out.